Welcome to a video on procedural generation in Twine. In this video, we cover passages and widgets. There are many different ways to approach procedural generation of content in Twine. This example covers using passages as storage and widgets as a method to generate content. This example also uses SugarCube 2.21.0 story format. This entire example is based on the Lesser Key of Solomon. It's a mid 17th century grimoire on demonology. What's important about it is as a set of different entries on spirits, demons, depending on your point of view, and they all have certain forms they follow. So there's a grammar we can create by filling in certain entries and replicating the same feel of an entry within the Lesser Key of Solomon. I have an example here on Baal. So the first principal spirit is a king ruling in the east called Baal. He maketh thee to go invisible. He ruleth over 67 legions of infernal spirits. He appeareth blah 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 blah. But you see here there's a certain pattern in this. It established the ranking, first principle, whatever, uh, king ruling in, named, and then sort of talents they have, go invisible, different shapes they have, cats, sometimes like a toad, sometimes like a man, speaks hoarsely, character worn. So it has a little backstory so the initial grammar we develop here, a little bit of backstory, as well as a standing, a name, their talents, and sort of their place or where they can be found or what they do. So we have the same number of examples that can be found in the Lesser Key of Solomon generated here procedurally based on these rules we've established by looking at these entries from the Lesser Key of Solomon, these entries on the different spirits here. So this is first spirit here, we have a made up name, we have a title, Minor Duke, appears as a ferret, carries a blade. He changes men into other shapes, tempts people to steal, heals all infirmaries. He is found within barren flat plains. He rules over 304 legions of spirits. Similar to our first entry here, but procedurally generated based on these rules we have. And we see example two, three, and it goes all the way down this page. So now we have 78 of them similar to the 78 that are also found within the Lesser Key of Solomon. Following the same rules and based on the grammar developed from looking at these entries within this work. So let's go look at the code for this. Our very first passage is the start passage. Pull that up. We see the same text I read through these example here and on upward. And then we finally see code. We're using the no BR, no break rule, macro within SugarCube so that no break lines or break rules are used between different output and it's all put together but no new lines are added. Then we see the use of the four macro for 78 cycles here so from 0 to 78 for a total of 79. Then what appears to be a number of different macro usages here. Get spirit name, get tool, get animal, get adjectives, get talents. Then we're adding the temporary variable i plus 1, printing that out. So instead of starting with 0, it starts with 1. And then we see the similar text here. The spirit, random spirit name, so the value of this variable. And then either great or minor, using the function in SugarCube, either. Then print either king, marquee, duke, prince, or president, similar to all we saw in this example. Appears as animal and carries tool. He and then talents, the variable whatever that is, is found within adjectives and tag. He rules over and then the number of legion of spirits from 20 to 600. So as we see here, these different macros don't exist within SugarCube. Those, these are ones we have created, but they're not strictly macros, they're actually widgets, which is a type of macro usage within SugarCube that allows us to write our own code and call it as if it were a macro. So let's go look get spirit name first. Get spirit name as we saw is defined as a widget using the widget macro. It also is in a passage by itself with the widget tag on that passage. This helps us break up these in different passages so we can edit one at a time. They also need to be tagged as a widget so that they are loaded first so we can call them from other code. Notice we call them in the start passage, which means all these widget codes will be run and loaded, and then we can call them within the start passage. Within this widget, defined entirely here, we're using the silently macro, disregard all output, we don't care what this output is. Then we're doing passage contents, story get, 
So look for a passage spirit name, get it as a passage object using its text property. So whatever the textual content of that passage is, we're now going to split it along the new line character, which means we will take what is a string of different entries, break on the new line character and turn that string into an array. Then we're going to set random syllables, random zero to three. We're going to use the pluck, which is an array function that is within Sugarcube that allows us to get a random entry and then reduce the total array minus that entry we just got. Then we're going to go in a random loop here from whatever random number we just set. Set a random number, pluck it, add it to random spirit name. And then finally we're going to use a little bit of string magic here to replace the first letter of whatever this is with an uppercase character equivalent. So this is looking at spirit names. It's getting spirit names, it's turning a string into an array, it's getting random entries in that array using pluck, and it's concatenating them, adding them together to produce a new random name based on whatever is within spirit names. Let's go look at spirit names. Spirit names is a number of different chunks I've taken out of the names within the spirits provided in the Lesser Key of Solomon. So our examples are based on the similar structure of the names we already saw. And I gener generated these semi-randomly by taking all of the names, putting them in a file, and just chopping them up in different ways. So as we saw when it generated, we get things like this one, Gus, which is a pretty good name, this one, Mal, which can be very short or very long, depending on however the randomness works out. B is a really good one here. Following the same principles, that we saw in the same general structure we see in this example from the Lesser Key of Solomon. So we have all of these different possible spirit name groupings that are then combined together randomly within get spirit name. Random spirit name is then set. And because it is not a temporary variable, it is a story variable or global story variable in this case, it means we can access it once we set it. So coming back to start, we saw the first thing that happened was get spirit name. And we see down here, random spirit name would have been set. The next thing that happens is get tool. Pull up get tool. We see a similar thing to the last passage. Again, this is a widget passage with the widget tag, which means it will be run first and loaded using the widget macro. The same similar structure, silently macro, disregarding all output of the following code. In this case, we're not combining things. We just want to get a passage object of tools, get its text, split its text from a string into an array, and then get a random entry within zero to just under its length inclusively, set the random tool to tool. So we're doing all this using temporary variables and saving story variable tool. As we saw, coming back to start, get tool, and then we use tool down here because it was set. Get tool, as we saw, looked at tools, and in this case, I've cheated a little bit and put whatever article is in front of it, an or a, or in this case, left it off plurals, so it all makes sense when it runs together. And we don't have to do any extra code to check that back and forth. So it was all get tools, coming back to start, get spirit name, get tool. The next one was get animal. Get animal and tag works a little differently and works towards showing another example of something I wanted to demonstrate in this video. So we're in this case, getting a passage object called animals, getting its textual content, splitting the string into an array, getting a random line, and now we're splitting that line. This is an extra additional step. So not only are we splitting the strings based on their new line characters into an array, but then we're taking each line, which is in its own array and splitting that an additional time in two. So in this case, we're getting a random animal as the first line in that split line. Then we're getting as tag as the second entry, zero and one. So not only can we use uh, split a string into an array, but then we can split those strings additional times. And then we can use that data to procedurally generate more things, which is what this uh, example is building towards. So our first one is animal and our second one is tag. We're saving animal here and we're going to use it as we saw come back to start. Our get animal, we used an animal down here, appears as animal. But then we saw the use of tag. Tag is set in get animal. 
as we just saw. So we set tag here to be split line and the second entry. Let's go look at animals to see how that plays out. Well, as we see here, similar to tools, I've put in articles, and or a, depending on what it is, comma, and then whatever the tag is for that. So antelopes, for example, are tagged with forest in this case. This example I'm talking about how presenter to <laughs> procedurally generate even more content. So we're taking this long string, splitting it into an array for each line in the new array, we're splitting it again, and we're saving the animal as the first entry, split using the comma, and then it's tag. Tags are used to generate adjectives. The adjectives then are based on the animals that are chosen in this cycle here. So get animal macro using the widget macro to create it, sets its animal and its tag. And the tags are based on whatever animal that's chosen so that the tags based on its location make sense for whatever animal it is. That is, we're sort of chaining procedurality here. So as one thing is set to one, the next thing is based on those choices, and we could even chain it more and more steps where each one of those is set on more choices and more choices and more choices, leading us and sort of using the tagging system here, very basic tagging system here, to create a chain of procedurality. So again, in this case, antelope and forest. So as we saw in get animal and tag, our get animal pseudo macro using the widget macro, sets tag and animal. Well, let's come back to start. And then we saw the very next thing is get adjectives. This is where tag comes into play. Let's look at adge get adjectives. Get adjectives, as we've seen here, is another example of this. Using widget to find get adjectives, using silently to disregard all output. And now, instead of feeding it a set name and programming that in, we can programmatically supply that here. So our tag is one of three different named passages, desert, forest, or plain, each of which contain their own text. So again, chaining procedurality here. Let's come back to get adjectives. Again, we're getting one of these based on whatever animal we chose, then set its tag. The tag here in get adjectives is then telling it to look at a new passage and pull out those. So the same thing before, find that passage as a passage object, get its text based on the text property of that object, split it based on the new line character from a string to an array, and then we're going to build two here. So pluck, again, get a unique entry in reducing that array, adding a comma, getting calling pluck again to get a new one, and saving adjectives, just like we did before. Same general setup, but with a slight twist that the previous step procedurally led into this step. Coming back to start, we saw that down here, to uh, down here at the bottom, he is found within adjectives, and then print tag with an S. Because it was forest, desert, and plain, we want forests, deserts, and plains, plural. And that's what we saw in this example. He is found within barren, comma, flat planes. Producing programmatically based on the ferret. The ferret is found in planes. It tagged the it set the animal and set the tag. The tag led to the adjectives and to the place. Because this tag plane set these adjectives. So animal led into place. Finally, here we see get talents as the last step. Let's look at the get talents passage. Same similar setup before, using silently within this widget usage. Disregard output, we don't care about it. Getting talents, passage by that name, its text property, splitting it from a string into an array, using pluck to bid here an Oxford comma separated list of a name, unique name from this list, comma, unique name, comma, and a final unique name using pluck each time here, an array function set in sugar cube. So we're plucking one, setting a comma to, or concatenating a comma, plucking it, comma, and, and a third one, which is what we saw in practice. In this example, changes men into other shapes, tempts people to steal, comma, and heals all infirmities. Which is what we see here. And get talents looks at talents. 
Talents is based on all of the entries I went through and looked at, the Lesser Key of Solomon. So these are all similar setups to the entries we're already seeing, plus a few more I threw in. So we see all these different talents here. So our procedurality coming back to the start is we get a spirit name based on the existing names I saw within Lesser Key of Solomon I put within a passage. We split those string, split, split <laughs> that string into an array. We combine those entries to create a new name. Then we get a new tool based on a tools passage. We set that. We get a new animal. And then on the animal line, we get an animal plus its tag. In objectives, we use that tag to look at what places we should look at, forest, desert, or plain. Then we pull in two objectives or adjectives. Next, we look at talents. We use a similar thing. We pull in three talents combine those together into a sentence, and set that. And so finally we have a complete entry here, procedurally driven by the content that was found in the example it's based on, the Lesser Key of Solomon. Where not only do we have entries based on a similar setup, as we saw on this one, its name, what he does, what talents he has, and what he looks like. We have a name, status, appears as a ferret, carries a blade, three different talents, where he's found, and what he rules over. Procedurally generated based on the genre or format we already saw in that entry, and using those existing entries to feed into our procedurally generated content. We're also, as in this example, using widgets to drive all of this. Instead of including different passages that then can include this code, we're writing our own widgets so that we can then call those widgets as if they were functions and other programming languages to go do this functionality for us. And in the example of get animal and get adjectives uses here, we're feeding one to the other. We're getting an animal, we're getting its line for the animal and its tag or where it's found. The tag is fueling the adjectives that define where they're found in that location. This has been a long overview of how to use passages as storage, storing different things as we saw in spirit names based on entries of a previous text, some examples based on tools, and talents using the same thing. For animals, we're showing an additional step of that, of not only using a passage as storage here and splitting it from a string into an array, but using that one additional step and splitting it that line from the string into an array and then splitting the array again, or splitting the result of that string into an array again. So from string into an array entry that is a string, from that array entry that is a string into an additional array. Or in other words, procedurally tra chaining our content here of using our animals that's setting a tag, using the tag that describe the location. All a long-winded roundabout way of covering passages and widgets as a way to chain different procedurality within Twine and use Twine as an engine to procedurally generate content based on existing format or genre, in this case Lesser Key of Solomon, an existing 17th century work, anonymous work on demonology, looking at how it produces things and replicating that in Twine by using the examples it provided and understanding that we can use widgets to look at passages of storage and to fuel procedurally chaining ideas and twine. Thanks for watching. Oh, and as a reminder, the code for this example will be found in the description of this YouTube video, as well as a proof copy of that same code. <laughs> Thanks for watching.